Shopping for a transducer is the most daunting task of selecting your marine electronics. In today's video, I want to give you key considerations that are going to help you better select the right transducer for the style of fishing that you do and result in catching more fish. Let's get started. In today's video, we're talking basics of transducers, how to select the right transducer that matches the style of fishing that you do the majority of the time. That's key here. That's the first question that I asked myself when I was shopping for a transducer. What am I going to be doing the majority of the time on this particular boat? This is a rather small boat. It's only 25 feet. The majority of the time I'm going to be offshore fishing just a few miles back, you know, into the inshore waters and catching bait. So most of the time, I'm not gonna be in water over three or 400 feet of water. Most of the time, much less than that. Let's say 200 into 20 feet off the beach or so. So for that, it was very obvious to me, I needed a high frequency transducer. And when you're thinking of transducers, I had an analogy from one of the guys at the boat show several years ago that he told me to think of a transducer frequency as a speaker, as a stereo system in your car or boat. When you got those high frequencies, you're talking the treble. That's the most detailed information, the most detailed audio coming out of the speaker. Same thing with the transducer. When you got a high frequency, just like the one I do, you got that detailed cone you know, it's staying very shallow and it's showing you a lot of detail on your screen. You're able to mark fish in, you know, 100 feet of water, 50 feet of water really, really well. However, if I was going to be doing sword fishing or deep dropping on this boat when we're going, you know, in water far greater than a thousand feet, this particular transducer isn't going to work well. It's just too high of a frequency. For that, you're going to need a low frequency. And just like the speaker I was talking about in your car or boat, that's the base. I'm sitting over here at the sandbar right now and I can hear bass coming from one of these boats over here that he obviously has a subwoofer in there. And that's the boom, you know, sending that wide array down deep. And that's how you can mark swordfish and deep drop fish and stuff like that. So, you know, knowing what frequency you're gonna have is determined by what type of fishing you're doing, how deep of fishing you're doing the most of the time. And that's the most important question that you can ask yourself when you're trying to select a transducer. That for me just made it super obvious. I needed a high frequency, thousand watt, and I went with the B175HW, which is a rather new transducer on the market. Typically, high frequency transducers have a really narrow cone you know, just like this, whereas mine is a little bit of a wider cone. You can see here from the chart from Aramar that I have a little bit of a wider cone for my high frequency. It comes in handy when I'm marking tarpon off the beach with Captain Tim. Um, also, when I'm trying to catch bait, you know, I just get a little bit of a wider cone that really helps. So, you know, the high frequency was a no-brainer for me. I'm rarely offshore. You know, I'll never be sword fishing in this boat. I just didn't rig up for it. So once I knew exactly what transducer I was going to get, it came down to knowing the installation. You know, this is a question you need to ask yourself too. How are you gonna install your transducer? There's three types of transducers you need to be concerned about. That's gonna be a transom mount, a through hole mount, and an in hole mount. The transom mount is gonna be the most common transducer you're gonna see on smaller boats, say 25 or, or less. They're the easiest to install. They offer great detail, great reading. You need to know how to install those correct so you get the the most optimal water flow to that transducer. Water flow is everything to a transducer. If you have any interference, it's gonna cause a bad picture and just something that um, you know, you're not gonna want out of your transducer. For me, I went with a through hole transducer. It was really the only option I was considering on this boat because it's really the, the clearest picture that you can get out of a transducer when you have that transducer going right through the hole. Now granted, depending on the size of the transducer, whether you got a 600 watt, a thousand watt, or even a much greater watt transducer, will determine the size hole that you need to cut. And if you want to make me nervous, ask me to cut a hole in the bottom of my boat, not something I want to do. I leave that to professionals and the guys at Preferred Marine did that for me. You guys can see here my transducer through hole going through the boat, shooting straight down. Um, great image. Another consideration you need to take into account when installing your transducer is that you purchase the right tilt. 
When we're talking through holes, we're gonna have a little tilt to it so that the transducer still points straight down. I have a very deep V on this boat, about 24 and a half degrees. So we're gonna be, so if this is the V of my boat here, the transducer is gonna go on one of these Vs here on the side and it's not gonna be pointing straight down. So Aramart and several of the other companies, they sell a tilt transducer depending on how much dead rise you have. I went with the 20 degree, which was the closest to my 24 degree uh, dead rise. So we're gonna mount it right here. And when you're mounting it right here, even though it's pointing this way, it's still beaming straight down. So you get that right tilt on it. You get that right action out of your transducer. And that's very important. Now you can play with that, give or take about five degrees, they say but you want to get the most optimal tilt to the bottom of your boat. That's the transom dead rise of your boat. And that's going to help you get the best angle out of that transducer. So those are the basics of picking out a transducer. I know it could be a daunting task and it sounds difficult, but if you really break it down to the style of fishing that you're going to be doing most of the time, or even if you're not fishing, if you're just boating and you want to mark, you know, channels and stuff like that in depth, you know, having the right transducer is going to give you more detail for that style of boating or fishing that you do. For me, it was pretty obvious. I needed a high frequency on this boat. This isn't a very large boat. Most of the time I'm going to be, you know, three miles or less offshore. If I was building a bigger boat and I wanted to focus on offshore fishing, such as sword fishing or going to the Bahamas and stuff and marking those tuna, I might do another transducer such as a mid or a low. And that's pretty common amongst fishermen that I know where they put a low frequency transducer as well as a high. Now today there are combo units. I mean, these things are enormous that can go on your boat and do everything. Low, mid, high, get all that, all those frequencies in one. They're huge. They're not really an option for a boat like this would be way too big in the bilge there. Um, but as you get into your 30 plus footers, having the combo unit is very common. And a lot of my friends use those transducers and they are very, very detailed and uh, mark stuff very well. I hope now you know the basics of picking a transducer and you go into setting up your marine electronics with a little bit more confidence that'll help you pick out the transducer that matches your style of fishing and maximize what you're reading on your screen to help you catch more fish.